Today, in this day and age, I very firmly believe that we are on the edge of a human rights revolution. That there's never been before a time in history that we could really do what we can do for human rights. Only in the last years, 10 years, last decade, countries throughout the world have passed new laws. The laws say you have a right to a lawyer, you have a right to be tortured. But as you all know, people are tortured everywhere in the world on a daily basis. Now, when I graduated from Scripps, most countries did not have these laws. And so what we could do was write letters protesting the government, saying, this is what the situation is. Um, let this political prisoner out. But in 1994, I walked into a prison in Cambodia, and I met a 12-year-old boy who had been tortured and was denied access to counsel. And as I looked into his eyes, I realized that for all of the hundreds of letters that I had written for political prisoners, I would never have written a letter for this boy because he wasn't an important political prisoner who had done something important for anyone. He was a 12-year-old boy who had stolen a bicycle. The irony of the situation is that in Cambodia, as in dozens and dozens of countries throughout the world, the laws are actually on the books, which allow people to come in and help implement these laws. And I believe that if each of us, I don't know what to do with the hat. If, take it off? Okay. Free. I believe that if each of us were to make this commitment, this worldwide commitment to helping all of these countries, right now there's 130 countries in the world that still practice torture. In the majority of these countries, the laws exist on the books. The governments are open to having us come in and help them. It is really a new day and age. There was a time when I graduated from Scripps 21 years ago where we really couldn't go in because the governments were like, no way, you cannot go in. But this is a time where we can come from a different place. We can come from a place of love. We can say, can we work together? Now, I will admit that at the time, 21 years ago, when I graduated, I was a different person in many ways than I was now. I am now. And I felt that we should only be angry and we should only protest. And I believe that there is a time and a place for protest. But I also realized something very profound a number of years ago when I was working in the prisons of Cambodia and working with the police officers. At the time, I was training police officers who tortured a number of people. And I couldn't really figure out what we should do because they were continuing to torture people. And I remember going to my boss because I worked for the United Nations, and I said, you know, what should I do? It's this kind of, what should I do here? They want to keep torturing. And they said, ah, oh, you know, tell them what the laws are. It'll be okay. And finally, I went to a sister at Missionaries of Charity, and her name was Sister Rose. She was from India. And I said, Sister Rose, what should I do here? And she gave me a very important piece of advice that has changed completely the way that I perceived human rights. She says, you know, Karen, whatever you do, you should look for the Christ. You should look for the Buddha in each person that you work with. Because she really believed in the power of transformative love. And through that power, people would shift and be changed. And I took her advice. And I was amazed at the change. Within the guards, within the prisons, they let me in. They took out all the dark cells. They began to shift their own perspective. And I began to see that there was a strength and a power that went beyond the logical, went beyond just the laws, just the way that we talk about it. Today I see that too with many of you as you go on into your brink. That, yes, it's true, with great power, comes great responsibility, and you will bring your knowledge forward, and you must also bring your love forward. You must bring your whole heart forward. You must bring the pieces of who you are, even when it's difficult. I say that, and I think to myself, I've got at least 50% of the audience laughing at me right now. But I really believe that in order for us to transform the world, that it's a huge piece of who we are. And that in the transformation, it won't only be the situation that's transformed, but we ourselves who are transformed. 
I remember in Vietnam one day being amazed as I walked through and saw a man who was working with street children. And these were the street children who you'd walk into an airport and you wouldn't want to be around them because they would probably be pickpocketing you or doing something strange. But I saw him and he had, he had this great safe house where the kids were supporting each other and singing songs and, and they were all street kids who had been in and out of prison. And I said to him, this is, this is amazing what you've done with the kids. Tell me how you started. What did you do? And he said, okay, I'll tell you because I was in great admiration of him. He said, you know, a number of years ago, I was a heroin addict myself. And one day I came out of prison and I saw the police picking up these boys for stealing eggs. And I shook my head and I said, you know what? It might be okay that I'm in prison, but these children should not be in prison. And at that moment I turned and I said to some of my friends, okay, I'm going to take off my hat. I'm going to pass the hat. We're going to do something for these children. And so he said, I passed the hat. We got a little bit of money. It wasn't much, but we decided we'll do something. So what they decided to do was that on every Sunday, they would gather the children in a park. And for that one day, the children would be children, meaning they would do haircuts, they played jump rope, they did different things. It was really an amazing process. After a number of years, they developed safe houses and began to transform the system for these children. But what the man said was this. He said, you know, I thought that I was doing it for the children. But when I was doing it for the children, I realized that I myself was transformed by the process. And so... As we, in our daily lives, go forward, be alive to the mystery and adventure of life. Know that you yourself have the opportunity for rebirth and birth every day. And that in the process of giving to the greater world, you yourself will be transformed. This is an absolutely amazing, amazing class. I am so proud to be here. And talking to some of the seniors, I realized that Scripps was wonderful 21 years ago, but Scripps rocks now. (laughs) Absolutely unbelievable. I really want to wish you the best as you go on in your journey in life. I know that each of you is given a rose, and that rose, I think, symbolizes so much. It symbolizes a lot because of its beauty, but it's also symbolic because each is individual, And each doesn't compare itself to the other. Each sees itself and knows its own beauty. So as you walk forward, I hope that you will always feel that sense of your own beauty in its own uniqueness. And if you ever need to, you should be able to buy yourself a rose. (laughs) You don't feel that sense of radical self-affirmation. Or maybe call upon another. Your road won't always be easy. It's one thing to be happy and joyful when things are going right. But when things are going wrong, that is the most important time for you to step forward with courage and realize that courage is also the ability to have radical self-affirmation in light of whatever else is going on in your life. That you can see yourself through and know that you'll get through to the next level. It won't always be an easy heroic journey for you. And it may be something that's, that's sometimes difficult. In China, we have a number of Chinese defenders who themselves often are in danger. They're standing up for the rights of clients who might be tortured. And oftentimes at the end of the trial, the judge or the prosecutor will point to them and say, you yourself have obstructed justice. Order the lawyer handcuffed, bring the lawyer to jail, beat them till they're bloody. But the lawyers have begun to band together and be strong for each other. And one poem that we always read with them is by Wayne Arneson. It is, Take courage, friends. The road is often long. The path is never clear. The stakes are very high. But deep down, there is another truth. You are not alone. Thank you today for joining me in this journey. I hope that you will open your hearts, too, to the many human rights defenders throughout the world, that you will give them and strengthen them with your courage, and that you will always look to each other as classmates, to give courage and strength to each other in the years to come. And may you always be blessed.